Hi guys, this is Megan with the blog WilsonHomsa.com and today I am going to be sharing a little bit of a moving update, kind of what's going on with selling our house and buying a new house. If you didn't see part one, it's just called We're Moving Life Update. I will link the video down below. It's kind of part one of this series because there's a lot that happens when you're trying to sell your house and there's just a lot of hurdles to overcome and things that happen and it's been crazy. So I wanted to have kind of a record to look back on of what exactly happened and then also it's just really fun to share with you guys what's going on. Now my mom, who is actually our realtor, her name is Suzanne Schmidt, she advised me to not share any more of the process until it's over, until we've closed on both of our houses. So I'm taking her advice on that because you never know who's watching the videos. And so this might seem a little confusing when it comes out because it's going to be going out when we're already closed. So this is part two of our selling and buying our house update, but it's going to be coming out a little bit later than it was actually filmed. Just to clear that up, because I think it's an interesting timeline, an interesting story to be telling, and then also fun for us eventually to look back on and see exactly what happened. But anyway, let's get right into this update. So I think in the part one, I left you guys kind of with that we had found a place that we really loved, that we were under contract on, but we had two weeks to get this house under contract and it wasn't even listed when we got under contract with the, the house we want. So we had to quick list it, quick try to find someone to buy it in two weeks or possibly risk losing the house we really wanted. That was such a stressful two weeks. We actually had so many people interested. We had so many showings. It was a nightmare trying to keep this house that clean with two little kids and being pregnant, but I did it and we, we had a ton of interest, which was really encouraging. There is just a lot of flaky people out there. It's ridiculous. So annoying. <laughs> like people would be interested. A lot of people put in offers, but then backed out. It was like weird. We probably had I don't know, like five or six offers, but like the first four fell through for some weird reason. Like we even had above asking price offers. We had cash offers. We had offers that were for full price and they were gonna even skip inspections. Like we had some really great offers, but then people just seemed to be so flaky about it. It was, it was strange. So we finally got an offer for, so we originally had this house listed for 350000 and we, I think after a little over the first week, we lowered it to 329000 Just because of our time limit, we could have gotten three fifty for it if we had waited, but you know, we didn't want to wait too long and miss out on the other house. So we got, we ended up getting an offer, a cash offer for three hundred, and then a little bit after that we got a full price offer for the three twenty nine. dollars but it wasn't cash, it was financed. And then also, my mom went back to the people who had offered 300 and she was like, we have a better offer, can you go up anymore? So they came up to 320. dollars So we actually went with the 320 cash, even though the other one was a little bit more. Just having them be cash, it's gonna go faster, there doesn't need to be appraisals, it's just a smoother process. So we ended up going with the slightly cheaper offer, 320 instead of 329 dollars Not really a huge difference. So we got under contract with the offer for 320 dollars cash like three hours before our deadline on missing out on the other house. It was so unbelievably stressful. We had tried to talk to their realtor about getting an extension because we were actually waiting to hear back from them about our inspection. So I will get into that in just a second, but we tried to get it extended until like three days later. They never really got back to us about that. I don't totally know what happened with that, but we did get this under contract before the deadline. So we're still under contract with the same buyer on our house and we're still under contract on the same house that we want to buy. <laughs> so that hasn't changed at least. So before we got under contract on this current house, we had the inspection on the house we want to buy and we ended up finding quite a few problems with it. So the main thing was that it doesn't have a proper foundation. 
It is concrete, but it's not deep enough, so the house will have to be jacked up and new footers, new concrete poured, and we talked to a guy that actually helped my grandparents pour their new foundation, and he estimated it to be about $40,000. So we went back to the people and asked if they would give us $40,000 off the price so that we could fix the foundation. They found a whole bunch of other problems in the inspection too. It's, it's an old house, it's 100 years old, so it's gonna, it's gonna have some issues. The foundation kind of surprised us, but like the siding needs to be replaced. It is just like really trash inside. It needs to be fully remodeled. The plumbing and the electrical needs to be replaced. So it just, it needs a lot of work. So we went back to them and asked them to come down $40,000 on the price. We listed off all the problems that they found in the inspection. We attached the inspection report and they had two weeks to get back to us. I'm like, why do they get to have so long to think about this? Like, oh my gosh, it just takes people so long to decide things. It's like, it's a, it's a little frustrating because I make very snap decisions. So waiting for other people to make such big decisions that are gonna affect, affect us so much is really hard for me. They didn't end up waiting the whole two weeks. They just did like a week and a half of thinking, but that was still like agony. We had pretty much decided after that first week of waiting that we were going to still go for it either way. So it didn't totally matter at that point what they said. I mean, obviously it would have helped a lot to get that money off, but we had decided that we would go for it either way because there's really nothing else out there and I feel like it's still a good price for that much land. So they ended up getting back to us and they said, no, we're not gonna give any money off their price or do anything to fix that, it's just as is. So we're like, well, okay, that's fine. We had already decided we were still going to go for it. So we put in our notice that we're proceeding with buying it. So that's all dealt with. At least we know the issues it has and it's, you know, that house has been there for a hundred years and it's done a lot of the shifting it's gonna do. And so it's not something that's urgent. It's not causing any imminent damage or problems. So we don't even have to fix it for a couple years. We can wait and live there for a while and really plan out what we wanna do and then fix it. So that helps a lot knowing it's not urgent. And we're just looking at this more of a, it's a very long-term project. Like we probably won't be moving again for 10 years, which is totally fine to do because it has enough land that we can we can do that. I feel like this is a very rambly video and I'm all over the place because I am I am confused about the timeline as well because it's just been so hectic and so busy that my the timeline in my head is like kind of all over the place. So I'm just like spewing as I remember things. <laughs> it's a little ridiculous. So that was nice. We got past the inspection on the house we're buying and then we had this under contract. Our inspection was actually scheduled for a few days ago, which would have been so nice if that was already done by now, but he actually changed his mind. The guy buying it is actually changed his mind on who he wants to inspect it. He picked someone that's really picky and catches like everything, which is fine. He can pick whoever he wants, but he can't come until a couple days from now, which like that's the next, like that's the, like the last big hurdle we have to get through is the inspection on this house. So I'm just like really anxious to get past this point and I really hope that it doesn't make him back out. <laughs> Cause this house is 120 years old. This is a old house. It does have issues. We have fixed the majority of the issues it had when we moved in. It was, it was so bad when we moved in but it still does have issues. And you would think that, you know, going under contract on a house that you know is 120 years old, I would assume that he probably is, I would assume that he would assume that there's gonna be issues on a house this old. Because it's just ridiculous to think that, you know, there's gonna be no problems with the foundation or like no problems with anything. So we'll see what he says. I'm, I am very, very anxious to get that part over with and just, know that he's going to proceed with it. We are willing to go down a little bit more on the price. We almost accepted his offer for 300, and then we got the 329 offer, and then he came up to 320. We're like, well, that's awesome. Like, we'll obviously take more, and that'll help to have more money to put towards fixing the foundation on our new house. But we do have some leeway with going down on the price, which is nice to kind of have that in our back pocket. If he does get the inspection back, and he's like, I can't deal with this, I'm backing out, we can come back to him and say, well, will you 
come down to this price. We're also, if they find anything in the inspection that's like small issues, Luke's willing to fix a lot of things. So I'm hoping having like those things in our back pocket will kind of get us through this hurdle because I just want <laughs> this this guy to stay under contract so that we can stay under contract on the house that we want to buy because there is like there was one other house that was available for like a week that we would have considered but now there is nothing like the house we're under contract on is the only one we would possibly even consider so if this falls through it's more likely to make that fall through and then we just have nowhere to go which is kind of scary we do have a backup offer on this house so we have people waiting in line so if he if he does back out, we have people that will jump right in and that will make it so that we possibly don't have to miss out on the property we're trying to buy. It's actually the people who offered 329. We asked them if they wanted to be a backup and they said yes, so they are waiting and I hope they don't get bored waiting in case he does back out. Oh, it's just a whole complicated thing. I don't know how people can be realtors. Like my mom is a realtor and she is so good at it. Like it's so her personality to be able to deal with all this. But this is like going to give me an aneurysm. I could, I don't think I could ever be a realtor and stay sane. <laughs> it's just too much. I know it'd be different if it was like not our house that we're selling and buying. It would be less personal, but this is still like too much. It's too much for me. And especially in this market, people are just more savage. I don't know what else to say. It's just a crazy real estate market out there right now. So my mom's had to do a lot of going back and forth and dealing with other, the other realtors and I'm very appreciative that she is just taking care of all of this for us and that we don't have to do it because I couldn't. <laughs> so we just have a couple more days to wait until we get the inspection on this house. They already did the radon test. That came back great so that's not anything to worry about. So it's like last last hurdle to get through and then it's like more smooth sailing from there and we are hopeful that because this guy is the guy buying our house is a cash buyer this one is going to close sooner than our new house and he said he's willing to let us stay here until ours closes which is super nice of him but it would also be like super fun to get early possession of our new house because I am so excited to move in and start like making it a home and nesting and putting everything away because being pregnant while this all this is going on is terrible. I don't like it. <laughs> Again, sorry it's kind of a rambly video and I will be filming more updates on this and then just posting them in order after we close on our two houses. So even if he does back out and we have to go to the next people, I will keep you guys in the loop on all this stuff. Keep an eye out for part three and four and five and like all of that stuff because depending on what happens during the inspection, there may be a lot more parts to this series, <laughs> but hopefully not. Hopefully it's just like part one, two, and three. <laughs> that would be nice if it was that simple. So make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because I have so much exciting content coming out soon with moving and selling your house and all of this stuff. I have so many ideas for new content and the new property. And I seriously have like 50 ideas written down filming wise while we're still here and ideas for new property. And we also want to be really taking you guys through the process of remodeling the next house because that may be a house we're in for 10 years. So I would love to take you guys through even more of the process on that one than we did with this one. So be sure you're subscribed. Be sure you go over to my website, wilsonhomestead.com and subscribe to my email list. But thank you for watching this video and I will see you next time. Bye.